Hi everybody, my name is Milby and this is my introduction to Game Dev Tycoon, uh, created by Greenheart Games and currently available over on greenheartgames.com. Uh, this is a Game Dev Tycoon, it's a game development tycoon game. Uh, it's a business simulation game available for Windows, Mac and Linux, uh, as well as Windows 8 Store. In Game Dev Tycoon, you replay the history of gaming industry by starting your very own de game development company back in the 80s where you have a little uh, garage and uh, you slowly make your way up the uh, the, the lift by creating best-selling games and researching new technology, inventing new game types and becoming the leader of the market and, and gaining fans, basically. So it's like a you're rewriting gaming history. You'll start off in a little garage in the 80s and where you were a one-man team creating gaming. And uh, in this, you can create games your own way. You, uh, you decide uh, with the way you change the development of a game with sliders and how much effort you put into one effort part of the game. And that will decide, basically, if it's a success or not in the reviews. Basically, eventually you get to expand your company out. Uh, I get to hire people, uh, make bigger and more complex games with a vast variety of people, um, with more complex engines and stuff. Expand once more, become uh, entirely like labs and stuff, construct industry changing projects. You could create your very own Steam before Steam was made. <laughs> Basically, um, it's a very fun game. And uh, I really, I, I think it's 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 much easier to to play it and see it than it is to 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 to, to talk about it. It's got it's very it's got so much depth. And you you look at on the surface and you think, what is this? This is silly. But you get into it and it's an incredibly in-depth game and quite difficult at times to keep a company going. But you might have seen it around quite a lot. It's got a lot of hype. There was a there was a there was some there was some news surrounding it involving um the anti piracy measures they took on it and uh, some very funny anti piracy measures in which if you pirated the game inside of the game the uh, the game your game development company would get plagued by piracy, and ironically, a lot of pirate pirate people who pirated the game didn't get that. So yes, this game is currently trying to be greenlit for Steam. So if you want to go ahead and uh, do that, it would be very helpful to them. I always suggest buying these off the site if they're available because it gives the creators more money than it would through Steam. And I think you do get a Steam key when it will eventually be released on Steam. That's what they're saying. So. That is Game Dev Tycoon, guys. I hope you enjoy it. I will have a face cam in the corner. And um, I hope you enjoy the game. Goodbye, guys. Hi, guys. It's Milby here. And this is Game Dev Tycoon. And this is a webcam, face cam. Figured I'd do a face cam for this series because it's kind of a... It's kind of a dirt. Well, it's, it's kind of. There's not much happening on screen during this game, despite being a very fun game. There's not always that much happening on screen, so I figured uh, I would have this webcam just to maybe make it a little bit different from others and give you something to look at. Um, you know, when I'm when stuff is happening. So anyway, we're not going to skip the tutorial because I don't want to have to explain stuff to you as we play. I'll just read it instead. <laughs> Welcome to Game Dev Tycoon. In this business simulation, you have been transported back in time to start your very own game development company right at the beginning of the PC revolution. In the next 30 years, you can build your dream company, create best-selling games, gain fans, and become the leader of the market. Yes. Before you can start your adventure, you have to give your upcoming company a name. I think I'll call us Mil 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 Milbo Mil Milbotronic. Sounds like I'm saying dildo. Milbo Milbotronic. Uh, Milbotronic Arts. That doesn't sound like anything else. Milby. And we will be. Oh, that's a good. That's that's the skin I want. Boom. Continue, continue. There we go. Thank you for that. There we go. There you go. That's the that's the save file I tried to create earlier, and then I realized that I was saving it wrong, so I got rid of that. <laughs> I realized I was recording it wrong, so I had to start again. So here we go again. 
If you ever want to review the tutorial messages, then you can do so in the help menu. To access the help menu and other features such as saving, loading and creating a game, simply press escape to access the main menu. Thank you very much, game. Congratulations. Congratulations. You've just started your very own game development company. At the moment, your office is in a garage and you are only you are the only employee. Oh. But don't worry, oh yay! Many successful businesses have started out this way. Yeah! Not this one, but other ones have. Let's start developing your first game. Close this message and then click anywhere on the screen to bring up the action menu. Why is Ball Smasher up there? Oh god, yeah. <laughs> Before development can begin, you have to decide what kind of a game you want to create and give your game a name. You can also select which graphic technology your game should use. Okay, so uh, let's... Yeah, okay. Your options are initially limited, but once you have a bit of experience, you will be able to unlock new options. Okay, so let's have a look at the topics first. Hello, cat. Sports, medieval, and space. Right, we're going to make a military strategy game. Yes, hello. Do you want to come say hi to everyone? Mm. Look. Oh. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, so this is, I'm going to make it for PC. And we're going to call this series... <laughs> Order... I used, no, I, I did this on stream, and I had a lot... And I, I was... What I did is I took game names, and I, I sort of just twisted them around uh, to, like, different different words and stuff, just to make me laugh. So I'm going to do that again here. So we're going to call this Order... And Take Over... Uh, this is our military strategy game called Order and Take Over. Next. 2D graphics, I think we'll want. We don't want a text-based strategy game. That would be strange. Would you like to go over there? Yes. Move forward. Would you like to attack? Attack. You miss. Would you like to miss? Yeah, wait. No, we don't say that. But I don't want to do that, okay? 2D graphics. Okay. Order and Take Over. Military strategy. One in design, one in bug. One bug before we even started? What? Really? Game development runs through three stages. At the beginning of each stage, you can decide what areas of the game you want to focus on. Picking the right focus for your game greatly increases the points you generate. Think about what areas are important for your game and decrease the focus on areas you think are less important. If you want to read a brief description of the different areas, please refer to the help menu. Right, so now this is where this is where I understand what I do, but I find the idea odd in the game. So stage one, we have uh, okay. engine, gameplay, and story and quests. Now the game engine provides the basic building block of a game, the underlying technology. A good engine also enables things like a multiplayer support, video playback, and realistic physics. Uh, gameplay defines how a player re interacts with the game and how the game mechanics, the rules that make a game tick, work. Storytelling and giving players goals to complete have been the basic of game for a long basics of games for a long time. So, like something I find weird about this is the idea that you like, the, the, the game works in like sliders. So, where at what point are you gonna? want to put gameplay down when you were like making a game you're like I don't want to make this game with good gameplay I find that really I find it odd that you would not ever focus on gameplay and have that full and how the mechanics the rules that make the game work basic building blocks of a game the underlying technology a good engine also knows things like multiple video playback and realistic physics okay so let this is a strategy game so let's have a strong engine Decent. We have a pretty a small focus on stories and quests. We're gonna have a, a strong focus on this engine, and the gameplay will be like that. So here we go. Okay, he's just sitting there for some reason. Here we go. Game development has now started. So you move the sliders around, and that basically 
you saw the bar at the bottom. The higher you put your slider, the more time he spends on it. If you put them all to full, he's going to spend not that much time on each one, basically. And what you want to do is sort of, you basically want to look at the game and go, does this game need a good story? Or, like, is this a, is this is a sports sim game, which I'm going to make. Uh, does this game need story? And you'd be like, no, of course not. So I guess I think that's how it works basically. It's it's kind of I find it weird. I like I get it, but I find it odd. That like I especially find it odd that you could you wouldn't like I didn't focus on gameplay there, that felt strange to me. <laughs> so here we go. While developing your game, you will generate game points, uh, which you can see bubbling up. <laughs> game points are divided into design points and technology points. The more points you generate, the better the game will be. From time to time, there will also be bug points generated. These points become less likely once you gain experience. Bugs need to be fixed before the game can be released and increase development time and cost. Okay, so there we go. We can see the bubbles coming up, bubbling up, bubble up out of my body into the game. Um, okay, so now we have stage two. So I'm going back on help here. So close that down. Stage two. Dialogues, level design, and AI, artificial intelligence. So dialogues are a part of the storytelling as well as uh, as well, but also provide interaction between NPCs and the player. Uh, level design defines the structure a player takes through a game. This includes simple things like where objects are located, but also the story arcs in a game. Uh, AI is how computer controlled entities, enemies, companions, or the world itself reacts to the player. So um, I'm going to have dialogues like bleh, really not focused on at all. And AI really high and level design is going to be pretty high too. Let's see how this... I have a feeling this won't go too great. I don't think this is going to be good. <laughs> During development, you can also select additional features for your game. Right now, you can only pick basic sounds uh, but your options will increase quickly. Selecting additional features makes the game generally better, but also increases its cost. You will also see the graphic type you selected when you defined the game. This is just to remind you of your choice. You cannot change the type of graphics mid-game. Okay. Uh, so we got on the side 2D graphics, version 1, basic sounds, 5K. So basically you can like take off the basic sounds and you have they won't cost you any more money. But let's keep it in there. So let's go back to help for the third part, just to get a glimpse of what they are. So world design, graphics, and sound. So world design, uh, some games invent an entire virtual world. World design delivers a backstory to a game and makes the game world more sophisticated and believable. Uh, graphics, the more obvious part of a game are its graphics, but that doesn't mean it's always the most important part. Sound. While sound is not as often as noticed as the graphics of a game, sound design plays a vital part to making a game great. So let's have high game, high world design, uh, fairly. Oh, to worry about the graphics too much, and the sound will. We'll have like that. Here we go. Come on, baby, get them bubbles coming out. Wow, I am getting a lot of bugs right now. <laughs> The development of your first game is now complete. You can press the finish button to publish your game, but you should only do that once you fix the majority of bugs. Now the bugs will disappear, basically. Releasing a game without fixing bugs can severely affect your ratings. You should only ever consider that. Just you need the cash and can't afford to wait. So basically, as you can see, the longer it takes, you can see the timer in the corner of that side, somewhere way up there. Um, uh, go, going along. So, so far it's taken us two months and four weeks to make this game. But luckily, as a bonus, as the bugs are going, sometimes extra technology and design. If you wait a bit, you sometimes will get extra bubbles. So let's... Let's wait a little bit longer. Come on, just a little bit more. Now get rid of that bug. Oh god, oh god. There we go, okay, here we go. Let's just take it out. Order and take over, just get it out. <laughs> the development of your game has now finished. While developing games, you gain experience and improve your skills. When development is completed, you will be presented with a summary of the experience gained. 
Okay, so that was it's a new topic, new combo. Great combo! Bonus times one point six. There we go. We got a uh, 170, 125, 97, 97, 126, 149, 130, 115, 102, 130. So there we go. That's all right. So you can trash the game here if you want, or release it. We'll probably release it. We spent a lot of money on it. Let's let's release it. I don't I don't very often trash games. You could just do a game for experience and trash it, of course, if you wanted to, if you have the money to waste. Some games might be better off being trashed. <laughs> uh, you're, I was looking at my cat then, she's staring at the wall. Your game is now complete and will be handed off to publishing. We should see reviews and sales coming in for the game soon. Okay, sweet. You finished your first game! While you developed the game, you also gained research points. You can use these points to unlock new options for future games. To bring up the research menu, close this message and then click anywhere on the screen to bring up the action menu. Okay, so let's research there. Research is important to unlock new options and make your better games. You should try to save enough research points to be able to create your own game engine. This will greatly improve your games. Hint, try to develop games of a different topic and genre combinations for a slight research boost. So you can research a new topic and we've got racing, fantasy, pirate, sci-fi. We could wait and try and get a custom uh, game engine. I think I'm okay waiting for now. We've got, we've got another f free ones we can make stuff out of, so we'll wait for now. We won't do any research, so let's wait for the reviews to come in. Here we go. Game review. The first reviews for our newly released game, Order and Takeover, came in. Here we go. Falls a bit short. Fuck you, Star Games. Military and Australia is a great combination. Informed gamer. Yeah, well done, man. Search potential? Okay, I'm okay with that game here, yeah. Love it! All games? Oh, yeah! <laughs> I was gonna spin them, but there was a table in the way. Let me try it this way. Okay, so 5, 7, 6, 8. I wish it was 5, 6, 7, 8. 5, 6, 7, 8. Na, 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 na. I, I won't, so I'm sorry. Right, so we're, let's make a game called Star Games is Balls. Right. News. Milbertronic Arts, a newcomer in the gaming industry, has just released their first game, Order and Takeover. <laughs> it should be raw. I should have called it Order and Takeout. That would have been such a good name. I missed a gem there. Uh, the game received favorable reviews. With such a good start, Milbertronic Arts are sure to gain fans quickly. Right, units sold 5.2 thousand units, sweet. Order and Takeover sold 5,231 units in uh, in its first week on the market. We made it in the charts at 74, sweet. Screw you, Star Games, you're fired. Now that, now that your game is on sale, you will receive the income from the game every week. If you're wondering why I move a lot, I tend to when I'm reading stuff, I tend to like rock back and forth in my chair. Sorry if it annoys you. Uh, now that your game is on sale, you will receive the income from the game every week. You can see how well your game is doing by looking at the sale graph in the top right of your screen. <gasps> okay, so there we go, right up there in the corner. Order and Takeover was so successful that we now have 27 fans! Oh, yes! It's more than I have on YouTube. Uh... <laughs> oh, we're down to 88 now. Okay, so there we go. We make... What was it? 7.1... 83... Oh my god! We're out of the top sales, though. Order and Takeover has achieved a company sales record of over 10,000 units sold. This is an important milestone in the history of Milbertronic Arts. Ah, yeah. Oh no, I just realized I've named myself EA in a different name. Oh. Electronic Arts. <laughs> that was not intentional. Fuck. Well, I'm EA now. It's time to start making sim games and pissing off people. 
Recent market studies suggest that the Gavador 64 is steadily outselling the Gavador G64 is steadily outselling competitors in the PC sector. Consumers prefer the lower price, the greater availability, and the flexible hardware configuration over other computers. Experts say this might spell the end of a competing hardware manufacturers. Right, so let's develop a new game then. Let's let's go for the, the Governor 64 this time. <laughs> Governor, the G64. So this time we're gonna make a sports sim. And we're gonna call it uh, what I what I called it last time, but you guys missed Ball Smasher. Ball Smasher, because you're smashing balls. So Ball Smasher hits the Governor. It's gonna cost us a bit more to make for the Governor, of course. As you can see, it's not gonna be a text-based sports game. Would you like to kick the ball? Yes, you kick the ball. Would you like to run after the ball? Yes, you run after the ball. Another player has taken the ball. Would you like to tackle the player? Yes. Right, Ball Smasher. I want to make a sports sim game with text base now. Game off the market. Order and Takeover is now off the market. It sold 16,590 units, generating 116,160 in sales. Sounds good. Those are some numbers. Those are some numbers right there. Already have a bug. Okay, so, uh, sports sim. Stalls and Quest. Blech. I don't need none of that. Gameplay, I feel like that's a high engine. Um, what was the wording for the engine? I have to keep going back to these now and then because game is a basic build mode game. The underlying again, like you think, like you'd put a lot of effort into the engine when you a good engine also enables things that multi. Okay, so yeah, we do. Okay, so let's just focus on gameplay and engine then. Mm, okay, that's actually that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Okay, dialogues don't need none of that. AI, yeah. Level design, we can take that down a bit to there. Gotta have good AI in uh, in a footy game. That didn't do too well there. Uh, right, sound, world design. I don't think I need to worry about world design too much. Or do I? It's a sim. It's a sports sim. Let's let's do that. I think that was a bad idea, but uh, uh, that doesn't look too good, does it? It's lower than our last one. According to rumors, the Japanese company Ninvento is planning to launch its very own home gaming console. Ninvento is known for the widely successful arcade game Dinky King. What thing about this game that like I love is that like the names they give the the, the things is like it's the kind of stuff that you have heard like your parents saying <laughs> when like stuff came out, and they'd be like, "Oh, do, oh, do you want the new um, Ninvento uh, Ninvento game?" Um, Dinky King, is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I love Dinky King. Sounds like a name for a penis. Many industry experts doubt that home gaming consoles will ever take off, but we eager to see what an inventor will deliver. Now, a lot of people who watch my stream will will say, realize I'm saying some of the same stuff, but um, that's because I only have a certain amount of stuff to say, <laughs> uh, and this is for also for people who who didn't watch the stream. Even though there were quite a lot of people watching that stream. Anything else? Anything else? A bit more tech. I will wait another month. Come on. Come on. Come on, you bastard! <laughs> Fine. Screw it. Give me ball smasher. Uh, new topic, new combo, great combo. Oh gosh, yes. Oh, good. Exp oh, good experience from that for engine and gameplay. Mm. 
I think gonna level up there. So good. Oh, nice. Okay, looking good. Let's release the game. Ball Smasher. Don't have enough for a new engine yet. The first reviews for our newly released game, Ball Smasher, came in. Come on, be good, be good, be good, be good. Be good to me, guy. Sports the same. Great combination from Star Games. Better than last time. Still not great. Very good from Informed Gamer. Oh, come on, Game Hero. Get out of town. I like it from all games. Ah, it's not... It's not as good as last time. Come on then, what's it gonna do? Yeah, it's not selling as much as last time. Oh, it came in ranked higher though. Sold more in the second week, what? Today, Ninvento has confirmed recent rumors and announced their plans to release a new home gaming console called TES early next year. NES. The hon the cons the console? The console features cartridge-based games and a uniquely designed controller. It does indeed. Okay, well there we go, guys. That was... Let me just read this. Hi there, I've just finished Ball Smasher and I'm impressed by your talent. I love Ball Smasher. Ball Smasher was great. I'm in the contracting business and we could use skills like yours. That's like the game uh, Dick Grabber or Dick Hand, I think it was called. It's actually a game, interesting game. It's not what you think it is. If you've ever short on cash, just let me know. Uh, and I will see if I have some work for you. Contracts have now been unlocked. To see available contracts, close this message and then click anywhere on the screen to bring up the action menu. Not right now though. We are I'm gonna I'm gonna i I'm gonna call it the end for this episode here. Uh, of Game Dev Tycoon. Uh, thank you for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh <laughs> I've been making episodes like with this idea that I'm going to put them on for uh, voting, but half of these I want to do anyway, so I could totally just see myself making these regardless. So let's save there. And uh, thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.